All right, welcome back to Dali Mars Concepts. What we're looking at today is another series of multiple choice questions. And we are actually looking at how do we solve these problems? If you're new to the channel, please like this video, subscribe, share, and drop a comment. Let us go. Question one says um, negative three square plus a negative two square is equal to what? Anything squared is positive. So negative three squared is positive nine plus negative two squared is positive four. And the answer is nine plus four, which is positive 13. So bear in mind that every single thing that is square is always positive, right? All right, let's take a look at number two. Number two says here, number two says, what number when added to one and a third becomes two? So you could think about it. If I have some number X and I'm gonna add one and a third and it becomes two, it simply means that this number must be two thirds because you're looking at the simple math, no big thing, one and one third, what must be added to that to become two? And this one is straight up, Two thirds, all right? So we don't have to do any big calculation for that. All right, so we could keep going. All right, so we are at, we are at number three. And number three says here, number three says, Anne and Betty shared a sum of money in the race of two to three and received to um, 120, what is Betty's share? A number of ways you could work this out. You could simply say, and which is two parts, right? That amount is equal to $120. If you divide um, this by two, you're gonna get what one part is, which is gonna give us $60. And that's just one. Remember though that Betty got three parts. So in order to tell Betty's money, we're multiplying three times the 60, which is going to give us 180. And so our third question there is actually C, all right? Now let's take a look at number four. Number four says one, no, 11.1 divided by 0 0.01. What we want to do is to set this up the regular way, all right? So we're looking at 11.1. And then you want to divide this by 0 0.01. Remember, the idea is that you want your divisor, which is this at the bottom, to be a whole number. So we're going to move the decimal point two places to the right, as you could see, for it to become one at the denominator right there. Now, similarly, when you divide, because you move the decimal place two places to the right, then you're going to have to do the same thing for the numerator, which is one, two. So the point is gonna land there, have to put a zero there. So we're looking at one, one, one with a zero. So basically what we have now is 1,110, which would be our final answer. The answer is C, all right? Our answer is C there, all right? So let's go. D. The answer is D. <laughs> I wrote it out. Watch. Uh, the answer is D. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. So the answer is D. All right. Let us um let us go to number five. Let's go to number five. So number five says a test marked out of 80, a boy scored 60% of the marks on the test, how many marks did he get? So what we wanna do is just to find the 60% of 80. So cancel zeros, they're canceling, zero cancel that. So we're left with six times eight, which is gonna give us a 48. So our answer is B for number five, all right? Let's take a look at number six. If 30% is 45, 30% of a number is 45, what is the number? There are many ways that you could do this. 30% is 45. Um, if you got a percentage of a number, right? And you wanna find the original number, 
then what you could do is reciprocate the fraction. So we're going to represent 30%. Remember, 30% is 30 over 100. So because we want to find the original thing, we're going to reciprocate that to 100 over 30. And if you multiply this by your 45, it's going to tell you where is that original thing coming from. So 0 cancels 0, as you could see. 3 into itself, 1. And 3 into 15 will give 3 into 45 is 15. 10 times 15 is going to give us 150 for number 6. All right? For number 6. So let us go number 7. So for number seven, it says here, what is the value? What is the value of the digit six in the number 48.061? Now, the first place of decimal is a tenth with a th. The second place of decimal is a hundredth with a th, all right? So that six is going to be six over 100, right? As you could see, the answer is A. All right, let's take a look at number eight. Number eight says the ATF of 12, 15, and 60 is what? Well, the highest common factor cannot be this. It cannot be this because we're looking for a number that could go into all of these numbers. And one and three does work but we want the highest one, which is three. So number eight is actually B. Let's take a look at number nine. Number nine says, using the distributive property, right? What could we represent this up? I'm going to factor out my 49. So 49, if I factor this out, I'm going to have 17. Divide this by 49 here, I get three. So I'm really left with 49. Bracket means multiplication, 20. So I'm looking for 49 times 20. And my answer is A. Number 10. The next term in the sequence, right? So let us use a quick subtraction. If I take one from uh, six, I'm seeing where there is a five here. If I take um, six from the 13, there is a seven. 13 from the 22, I'm seeing nine. 22 from 11, I see 22 from 33, I see 11. As you could see, I'm adding to the present, starting from five. So we're going to be five, then seven, then nine. So definitely I'm going to be adding 13 to this, which is going to turn it into 46, all right? Because we're adding five, then we add nine, seven, then we add nine, come again, five, then seven, then nine, then 11. Then it's going to be adding 13 to 33. That's going to land us over 46. Um, so number 10 is actually 46. The answer is C right there. Let's keep going. Number 11. Number 11 says, given that P, P elements are 2, 3, 5, 6, and Q, 2, 3, 4, then P union. So when you have a union is when you're combining the thing. So basically, we're going to squeeze 4 into this because 2 is here. It's here. 3, this is the same 3. So 4 will be a part of the whole thing. So when we unite everything, we have numbers from two to six, right? So now let's take a look at this. All right, so this one is not a part of it. So this is out. Um, this is saying where X is greater than one, less than seven. I like this, all right? So there is no equal and this is out and it's not this. So because this is saying greater than two, no, two is a part of it. So it's B, all right? So our answer is B right there. We take B and we move. All right, let's go to number 12. Now it says in the Venn diagram, uh, the shaded, so this is actually, as you can see, everything is shaded except P, which means that we're dealing with the complement of P. Um, and the complement refers to everything outside of this set that you're referring to. And as you could see, they did not shade P itself, so P was left untouched, which means that what was shaded would have been the complement of P, right? So let us go to 13. In a group of 40 students, we're told that 28 plays tennis and 22 play chess, right? What is the least number of students who play both? Um, what is the least number of students who play both tennis 
and chest. So what you want to do here is that you want to add these two. So basically, if I add 28 plus 22 and then subtract 40 from it, so the number in tennis plus the number in chess, and I subtract the union, it should take me there. This is about 50. 50 minus 40 will give me 10. So um, those who play both would have been 10 right here. 14. Item 14, uh, Venn diagram blue. It says factors of six, factors of four. I've seen this question a number of times. The shaded region would have been the numbers that are factors of both. So one, two, three, six, one, two, four. Two and one would be the sharing um, factors. Two and one, they're factors of four as well as factors of six. Let's go to number 15. Number 15, it says, um, this is Joan's income um, is 18,400. She pays a tax of 20%. The amount of income tax she pays is what? So we want to find the income tax. I'm just going to, well, there are many ways you could do that. Um, I'll say to you that you could have 20% times this. And then all you have to do is to just cancel your little zeros. For example, zero, cancel zero, zero, cancel zero. So I'm left with two times 1,840. And um, those are simple numbers that we could put together. That's about 3,680 when you double that. So there it is. Number 16, the value of a plot of land is 18,000. Land tax is charged at a rate of 0 0.07 um, dollars per $100. What is the total amount of tax paid for the land? In this case, what you want to do is that you want to take the time to find out how many hundreds we could get out of 18,000. So first things first, let's divide everything by 100. So when we divide by 100, we realize that we'll get 180 hundreds. And for each hundred, it's 70 cents. So all I'm going to do is to multiply this by 0.7. So you want to multiply 180 times 0.7. And you're going to get 0. Six to one, one place of decimal. Blah. So we're getting $126 right here. And remember, context of the question what is the total amount of tax paid for the land? Right? Tax 126. 17. At the end of the year, a car is worth 5% less than what um, it was worth at the beginning of the year. If a certain car was 10,000 at the beginning, then the value at the end. Um, so it's going to be worth, let's take a look. It says a car is worth 5% less. So you could take off 5%. So let us find 5% of that 10,000. Um, very straightforward, two zeros take off two. So that's 500 there. So $500 would be coming off. So if you should subtract that 500, then you're left with 9,500 here, number 17. Our answer is B. A man bought a mobile phone for $800 and sold it for $1,000. What was his profit as the percentage of the cost? So profit as a percentage of the cost is to find what the monetary profit was or is. So in this case, we're going to say 1,000. We want to take out that 800. So the profit was 200. We are going to represent this 200 out of what we paid, which would have been the cost price, which was 800. And then you multiply this by 100. So as you could see, this into this, one, four, a quarter of 100 will give 25. So this is 25% uh, in terms of a percentage profit. Susan bought a calendar for a calculator for $120. She had to pay sales tax of 10% of the on the price. How much change would she receive from this? So context of a question, uh, we're gonna find 10%. So 10% of 120 is 12, right? 
So let's work that out quickly. You do your thing, you're gonna realize that the 10% is 12. Uh, so this is tax that she's gonna pay. So 120 plus 12 is gonna take it to 132. So this is what the thing will cost. Change that you'll get, 140, take that from it and you're left with it. So context, um, $8 would have been the change. And what we wanna do is to pay keen attention to what they're asking, because as you see, um, they could have asked for multiple things here. All right, let's go to question 20. The simple interest on a loan of 6,000 for three years was 900. What is the rate? Now the rate can be found by doing this. You're gonna take 100 and you're gonna multiply this by the interest. It's gonna be divided by the principal times the time. Context for the question, um, the principal was six, um, the interest was 900. So multiply that by 100 there, and then over 6,000 times three. Um, let's do some canceling. The two zeros from the 100, take two here. Um, one from the six, take one here. Three into itself is one. Three into 90 is 30. So what I'm left with is 30 over six, and that is five. What is the rate? It's gonna be 5% per annum. A dress which costs 180 is being sold at a discount of 10%. The amount, the amount of the discount, the amount of the discount, be careful. They want the discount. 10% of anything is to just take off a zero at the back. So the answer is actually 18. Or, or it's going to be 10% of 180, zero cancer zero, zero cancer zero. We're left with 18. Context for the question, the amount of the discount is what? The discount is just $18, right? So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to what the question is asking. All right, um, $7,000 is borrowed at a rate of 5% uh, for three years, simple interest. All right, so what is the simple interest? All right, so simple interest I is equal to your principal times your rate times your time, and all of this must be over 100. So the principal would have been 7,000 um, times the rate, which is five times uh, the year, which is three. And all of this is over 100. Let's do the canceling. The two zeros from the 100 can cancel two from that. So basically we're at 70 times five times three. So you wanna, so basically that's 15 times 70. And we are about 1,050. So we want to put these little workings together quickly as we can as we go. All right. So the answer is 1050. Let's look at 23. What we're going to do here is that you have negative two and in brackets you have x minus four. We're going to distribute negative two inside the bracket and then see what we have. So negative two times x is negative two x. But when negative two multiplied by negative four, we get positive eight. So we're looking for negative two X plus eight. The answer is actually A. 24. If X is an integer that satisfies the inequality where um, four is less than two X, which is less than or equal to six, then what is X? Basically, you wanna take this and you wanna remember that this is worked out just the same way like an equation. So we're going to divide everything by 2. When we do so, 4 divided by 2, we're left with 2. We're going to put back our same sign. 2 cancel itself right there. So x is less than or equal to 3. So we're looking for 2 less than x, which is less than or equal to 3. My answer is actually a. All right, so that's 24. Let's see what 25 is about. It says here, um, item 25 refers to the information below, which shows the cost of a pen and a box, all right? So we're seeing X and Y. The total cost of three pens and two boxes is, 
Okay. So, so they're representing the idea, right? They're representing the idea. So they said two pens. So two, three pens. So you're going to put three where pen is. Two box. This is the idea with a plus sign because um, they're not alike. So say it's going to be three X plus two Y. That's the idea. They're not alike. We can't get five from it. So be careful. They're separate ideas. You place the coefficient at the right place. And then that's where it ends. All right, let's keep going. 26. What we're doing here, we're multiplying 3 times x to the second power. And we're going to multiply that by 2 times x to the third. Be advised that the, the coefficients will multiply. So 3 times 2 will give us 6. But when letters are multiplied, right? The same letter, we have to add their powers. Be careful. So we're looking at 6x raised to the fifth power, and the answer is A, right? A very simple substitution coming at number 27, and it says P is equal to M squared all over 2 minus M. When M is equal to negative 3 and the value of P is what? So basically, P is going to equal to M squared, which is going to be negative 3 squared. Be careful. Remember, nothing negative, um, nothing squared is negative. All right? And this is going to be 2 minus M. But remember, give respect to what the negative is. So this is a negative with a negative again. At the top, anything squared is positive. So that's positive 9. Please be advised that these two negatives will turn into plus. So we're going to get 5. So our answer is actually 9 over 5. And we want to look out for those so we don't error. Now, we're looking at binary operation here, where we have a context here. It says A asterisk B is equal to B over A minus 1. We want to pay attention to the pattern. We're seeing that the asterisk would actually put the A as the denominator and the B as the numerator, then take one from it. So let us manipulate seven asterisk 28. Be advised that the A is like a seven and the B is like the 28. So let us substitute 28, which is the B, on top of A, which is seven, then you take one. 28 divided by seven is four. You take one, your answer is three, and we're seeing the answer there at C. Right. Let's keep going. 29. What we have here is 5x minus 26, and this is equal to x plus 50. I want to collect all my variables on one side and then my constants on the other side. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So this is going to migrate to that side right here. And at the same time, I'm going to add 26 to both sides in order to get this on this side. Let us now simplify. 5x minus x becomes 4x. This becomes 0. This becomes 0. And this is now 76. Let's divide both sides by 4. When I divide 76 by 4, I'm going to get 1, 9. So I'm getting 19. So my answer is D. <laughs> Number 30. John has X marbles and Max has twice as many. So this is John and this is Max. So let us start off by just representing the idea uh, right away. It says John has X marbles and Max has twice as many. So it's going to be two times X. Max gave John, watch this, Max gave John five of his, okay? So Max gives John five of his. How many marbles does Max have? Max will have 2x take away the five because he gave away five out of his total. So our answer is actually C. Let's take a look at 31. 31 says when eight is subtracted from a certain number and the result is multiplied by three, the answer is 21. What is the original number? Now, let us set up a system. It says here, when 8 is subtracted from a certain number, let us call this number k. So when 8 is subtracted from k, right? Take a look. 8 is subtracted from a certain number. So 8 is subtracted from k. 
and the result is multiplied. This is the result is multiplied by three. The answer is 21. So if you take a look at this, when eight is subtracted from K and everything is multiplied by three, we get 21. What is that number? Let us solve this right by distributing. So three times K will give me three K. Three times negative eight will give me negative 24. And this is equal to 21. I'm going to add 24 to both sides. So 3K is equal to 45. Then I'm going to divide by 3. So you could see here that K is 15. If you want to double check it, you could say 15 take away 8. That's going to give us 7. If you multiply this by 3, you will get 21. That's what they were saying. All right. So that was just a quick verifier to, to make sure that you understand your, your positive going forward. Number 32 says the volume of a cube of edge 10 is what? Now, again, I've seen this question a lot, but here is a cube. The idea of a cube is that all the edges are the same length. So this is a 10 by 10 by 10. Volume is going to be multiplying 10 by 10 by 10, and we're going to get 1,000. So my answer is B. 33. A car travels 800 kilometers in two and a half hours. What is the speed of the car? What is the speed in kilometer per hour? Let's take a look. What is speed? Speed is equal to my distance over my time, right? So in this context, what is the distance? It's 80 kilometer. What is my time? Two and a half. Now, I could, re I could set this up in such a way that I'll feel better. So I'm going to divide by an improper fraction. For example, two and a half is the same as five over two. So if I divide this by five over two, and then I keep working, then I multiply by two over five. Then at this time, I'm way more comfortable. Five into itself is one, five into 80 is 16. 16 times two will give me 32, and this is my answer, all right? So there are diverse ways to get there. Let's get there the best way you can. Given that one millimeter is equal to one over a thousand meters, express 2,500 millimeters in meters. Now, in this context, I'm moving from 2,500 millimeters, and I want to change this to meter. All I got to do is to divide this by a thousand, right? So if I divide this by a thousand, one, two, three, it's going to end up to be 2.5. Let's go to 35. 35 says, item 35 refers to the diagram. We're looking at the area of, uh, we're looking at a sector with a, with a center angle of 60, right? So let us see what the question says. It says, AOB is a sector of a circle such that AOB, 60 degrees, and OB is R units. The area of AOB. What is the area of all of this? This is what they're asking. Remember, though, that the formula to find the area of a sector is theta, which is the central angle over 360 times pi r squared. Why pi r squared? Because a sector is just the part or just, it is just a part of a circle. So the same formula for the area of a circle will be used, except that we're dealing with a fraction of it. What fraction are we dealing with? We're dealing with 60 out of 360 times pi r squared. Now, if we should cancel on 60 into this, so 10, we cancel the zeros at the end. 16 to itself is 1, and 16 to 36 is 6. What is my final response? That is 1, 6, pi, r square. I'm looking for that, and it's at 8. So there again, you want to see what they're dealing with and make sure that you don't do unnecessary work because pi is a part of that answer. Let's take a look at 36. The distance around the edge of a circle upon is 88 meters. The radius in meters is what? Now, the distance around the pond is going to be the circumference. So circumference is equal to 2 pi r. Now, let us set up what we got. The distance around the pond was 88. Then I could say 88 is equal to 2 pi r. Context for the question, the radius, I need r. So I'm going to divide by 2 pi. 
So when I do that, R is going to equal to 88 divided by 2 pi. And I'm looking for that D. All right, so 20, 37. 37 says, a man leaves home at 22.15, which is 10.15 p.m. And reaches his destination at 400 hours, which is 4 a.m. All right, on the same day, in the same time zone, how many hours did he travel? So what we want to do is we could link this to 12 midnight. So, um, so 12 midnight is one hour and three quarters from 10, 15 p.m. And we're going to add that to four. So this is just five and three quarters, right? So that's it right there, 38. The area of a triangle is 30 cm square and the base is 10. What is the height? What we want to do is to set up the formula. The area of a triangle is equal to base times height over 2. Or you, you probably you're used to half base times height. Same thing. Now, area is 30, which is equal to base. And the base was given as 10. Height, we don't know, over 2. There are multiple ways to do that. We could cancel the 2 and the 5 right here. So the 2 and the 10 right here, so we'll get 5. So 30 is equal to 5 times h. So we divide by 5, divide by 5, h is equal to 6. So our answer right there is 6. 39. The parameter of a square is 48. What is the error? Now, context for question. Um, we want to understand that for a square, all the sides are concrete, they're equal. Now, if you add up all of them, you get 48, which means that if you want to find one side, you divide by four because four equal sides were added to give 48. So this becomes 12. It means then that this is 12, this is 12, this is 12, this is 12. We only could do that because it's a square and all the sides are the same length. That is why we divided by four. What is the question though? We want to find the area. How do we find the area of a square? It is L square, or you might be used to L times L, which is 12 times 12. And we're looking for 144. The answer is B. Number 40. Item 40 refers to the diagram below. We're looking at the cylinder with a radius of three and a height of eight. Let's take the question. The diagram not drawn to scale shows a cylinder of radius three and height eight centimeters. The volume, what is volume? Volume is given by this. It is actually pi r square h. What do I mean? It's gonna be the area of the circle times the height. So in this context, notice pi is in your answer. So basically it's gonna be pi r is three square h is Eight. So let's continue. So we're looking at pi times nine times eight, and this will be nine eight is actually 72 leave with pi. I'm looking for that, my answer is C. So we're applying self to the, to the question to see how much we know, and as we go, 41. It says item 41 refers to the diagram below, which shows the number of children age four, five, six, seven, and eight, who took part in a survey. Now, what is the modal age? The modal age refers to the age that occurs most frequently. So we want to look um the age, it says the modal age. So which one of these occurs most frequently? You're looking for the one with the most children. So five here would have linked to seven. So the modal age is seven, not five, right? So we have to be careful here. The answer is seven and not five. Modal age, you, your answer must come from where the ages are. Five would have been the height that would have allowed us to identify um, to identify this as seven here. Let's take a look at 42. How many children took part in the survey? Now, if I want to know how many children took part in the survey, what I want to do is to add up all of these vertical heights here 
because they would have represented the number of children for each age group. For example, we have three children here. Take a look at your axis. We have four children here. Um, here I have two children, I have five, and I have one. So I want to add these up as I go. Three plus four, that's seven, plus two, that's nine, plus one, that's 10, plus five, 15. So we're looking at a total number of 15 children that took part in your survey. 43. Jade scores on her nine study tests are five, seven, seven, four, five, four, seven, six, six. Therefore, our median score on the test is one. In order to do the median, what you want to do is that you want to arrange in ascending or descending order. I'm going to go in ascending order from four. So there are two fours. I'm going to write four, then four, and then there are one, two fives. So I'm going to put five, five. I see two six, and then I have six, six, and then I see three, seven, 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 seven. Normally when I do that, I double check to make sure that I have all of them. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You check again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I have nine, my, my middle, median is middle. My middle one will be where the fifth one is, right? The fifth. So this is my fifth one. And you notice the median would have split your data into two equal halves. So when I pick six, I have four to the left and I have four to the right. So my middle is this six right here. So six is my median. And we want to appreciate the fact that one has to organize the data in either ascending or descending order, whichever one suits you, but you must arrange it in order to get it. Let's go to 44. 44 says, if the mean of four numbers, four, eight, x and 12 is 10, what is the number? So what you want to do is to set up what is the context of the mean? We are aware that the mean, which is 10, is equal to adding up these. And then you're going to divide by how many of them? Four. So we have one, two, three, four items. So basically, this is context for where we're going. What's the definition of the mean? Is to add up or the sum of the things divided by how many of them. So let's, let's keep it going. So we have... What we could do right now is to multiply both sides by four to get rid of that denominator. So I have 40 here, and then I'm gonna add four and that, that's 12 and 12, that's 24. So basically I have 24 plus X, right? So I think the answer is 16. So I'm gonna subtract 24 from both sides here. 40 minus 24 gives me 16, which is equal to X. So the answer is X. So you sort it out based on that same thing because remember average refers to mean and mean is a statistical average so you set up a system and then work your way through let's go to question um, 45 the boundaries of a class interval 10 to 14 are best recorded as what uh, if i'm gonna go boundary i'm dealing with some old number here i'm gonna subtract nine from the lower limit so nine I'm going to subtract 0. 0.5 from the lower limit. So 10 minus 0. 0.5 will give me 9.5 here. I'm going to add 0. 0.5 to the upper limit. So this becomes 14.5. Remember, when you're dealing with the boundaries, you're going to subtract 0. 0.5 from your lower limit and add 0. 0.5 to your upper limit. I'm looking for this. All right. So uh, as you could see here, um, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. There's only one here that made sense, and it is this. So um, as soon as you find your answers, try not to error, okay? Try not to error when you're picking your final answer. Let's take a look at question 46, right? It's about this graph here. It says, the straight line AB cuts the x-axis at what? Remember, when you cut the x-axis, it simply means that we're looking for that x-intercept, that x intercept that's what we're actually looking at which is right here and what is the coordinate here it's where three meets zero the x first followed by the y so one has to be able to read 
the coordinate. So the answer is A, reading our coordinate is very vital to what we're doing. Item 47, it says the relationship that best describes the mapping shown in the diagram is what? Um, well, it's gonna be many to one. And the reason why I'm suggesting that, I'm just gonna color code the idea. If you notice, we are seeing two things going there. Um, when it's more than one thing going to one, to another thing, we call that many. Anything more than one is many. So take a look. And lastly, take a look. So you're seeing where many going to one. That's the idea here. Many to one, the answer is B. And the arrow is what really, because look at the movement of the arrow, right? So you have to be very careful because if you don't pay attention, it could have been, if the arrow had turned the other way, it would have been one to many. But based on where the arrow was coming from, I could see that it's many things going towards one, okay? All right, let's take a look at 48. 48 says, um, what we have here is that f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 1. What we intend to find is f of negative 3. Negative 3 is an input. x here are the input values. Oh, I'm going to plug in negative. <clears throat> I'm going to plug in negative 3. So where x is, so it's going to be negative 3 squared minus 1. We're still going to work this down. Remember, when you square negative 3, that's positive 9. We're still going to take 1. 2 times 9 is 18 minus 1. My answer is 17, and it's at C. We're coming down. Let's take a look at this here. It says here, the maximum point of y equal to 4x minus x squared is what? And when we speak of maximum point, we're talking about the highest value for f of x. So the maximum point would be right here, as you can see right here, right? And this is two that meets four, right? So I'm looking, I'm looking for two meets four. And remember, it's not four meets two, it's where two meets four. One has to name the x before you name the y. And be careful because as you could see, they have a four, two. But the answer is two meets four. I must read my coordinate with the x value first. Number 50. The value of x at the point where, oh, where y is equal to 4x minus x squared intersects y equals 0 are what? Now, what is this, right? y equals 0 is the same thing as the x-axis, right? So in other words, and if I should reread this for us, they're asking us, where did this graph cross the x-axis? y equals 0 is the x-axis. Let's go back. So I'm going to draw the x-axis. Um, for us. So with this yellow line, so take a look. This is the x-axis, right? So if that's the x-axis, let's take a look. It crosses there, and that's where x is equal to zero. It also crossed right here, and that is where x is equal to four. So my two solutions are as follows. x is equal to zero, and x is equal to four. Let's go for that. x equals zero, x equal to four. The answer is number one. All right. Let's take a look at 51, all right? Did I miss any? Oh, no, I didn't. All right, good. So we're at 51. So 51 says, uh, which of the following best describes the function? So what you want to do is to see which one of these are actually representing the idea. So you could go through um, or go through a process of elimination as you go, or you could definitely... Um, just make a quick look to see what's going on. So let's take a look. This number one says x plus f of x is equal to x plus three. In other words, y is the same thing as f of x. So in other words, this is saying that y can be found by adding three to x. Let us see. So two plus three, did it give five? Yes. Let's check some more. Five plus three, did it give eight? Yes. 8 plus 3, did it give 11? Yes. And as you can see, 11 plus 3 did give 14. So then that means that A is our response here because 
um, f of x, which is y, can be found by adding 3 to x. Let's go to 52. If the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is four right angles, then the polygon is what? Now, if you have four angles, then you have a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, for those who do Spanish, that QUA refers to four. The answer is B. That's a triangle, that's three sides. This is a hexagon, that's six sides. This is a pentagon, that's five sides. We're looking for four sides. Um, the number of angles in any um, polygon is equal to the number of sides that it has. All right, 53. It says in the diagram, AB and CD are parallel. I'll highlight those for us. So this is my AB, and we're told that it is parallel to, to CD. And definitely you could see that it was cut by a transversal right there. So what we're thinking of now is the relationship between two parallel lines and a transversal. Now let's see what they want. It says, which of the following best describe the relationship between X and Y? Now, because I'm seeing this, I'm actually seeing my Z angle very quickly. So I'm going to highlight this Z angle right here. Here's my Z angle. So I'm capturing my X and then boom, capturing my Y. So I'm seeing my Z angle, of which we call this alternate angles are equal. So angle X is equal to angle Y. Alternate angles are equal, or what you call Z angles. 54. 54 says um, in the triangle, right, the value of x. Now, remember, there are three angles in a triangle that totals to 180 degrees. In other words, if I get two angles and I'm asked to find the third one, which happened to be x, all I got to do is to add the two angles that I got and subtract from 180. So I'm going to add this. I'm going to get 60, 60 from 180. X is 120, and then there you go, 54 is 120. We're still going. So number 55 refers to this diagram here. Um, it says, if the, the diagram um, OPQ, the triangle OPQ is mapped onto O P prime, Q prime, what type of transformation has taken place? Now you wanna take a look at this. I'm just gonna say it's a rotation, right? But uh, before I get there, um, I want to say to you here that um, you can see it's not an enlargement, it's not a translation, and it's um, you could argue if it's going to be a reflection, but it's not a reflection because we're not seeing the points working as is. But definitely, you're seeing where this was rotated over there, like there's a turning at this point, and the points would have turned over there. So it's definitely a rotation. So my answer is D. All right. Um, 56 says the length of MO in centimeters is what? MO. Um, here's, a, here's an idea. Where's M? Here's an idea. Now, because these two triangles, they would have the same angles, and I'm going to look at the same angles here. Because they have the same angles inside, it means that they are similar. So it's like an enlargement because what, what an enlargement does, it scale down or scale up, depending on which one you want to look at first. So it scale down or up the, the original thing or the pre-image or the object to an image. But what happened is that they are actually, they are actually very similar and the sides are linked by that scale factor. So what you want to do is to see what the scale factor Right, so for that to be done, you want to observe two corresponding sides. For example, this side AB correspond with MN. So you could see the link between that is that three is a half of six. <clears throat> with that information, because we're seeing six and three with the two corresponding sides, it's going to tell you that the smaller one is a half of the, the bigger one in context of corresponding sides. So seven will correspond to the side that they asked me for, which means that I'm gonna divide seven by two and it's gonna be three and a half, or you could say 3.5.
and 3.5 is here. So we take it and we go with it. All right. So now let us go to 57. We're, we're winding down. 57 says here, um, the triangle not drawn to scale, angle BAC back equal to 30 and AB 40. The length of BC in meters is what? No, the length of BC. In other words, then, you're asking me to find this side. Oh, not that side. That's AC. Hold on, guys. You're asking me to find this side here. This side is the opposite side to this angle right here. And we got the hypotenuse side. So it means then that I'm going to bring into context what we call so ka tawa. No. So which one of these are being highlighted? I'm seeing where sine because um, they asked me for the opposite side to the angle and we got the hypotenuse. So we want to start off this by setting up what we know. So we're saying the sine of 30 degrees is equal to BC over 40. So in an effort to find BC, you could multiply both sides by 40. And then 40 sine 30 is the answer. If you look, you don't make the error. The answer is A. Look at B, 40 tan 30. Look at C, 40 sine 60 and so on. So you have to be on your P's and your Q's. Look out. Make sure that you're not making any error as you go forward. All right. Now let's take a look at 58. 58 um, says that we have, so we could see um, in the diagram, the translation by which AB is mapped onto a prime, B prime is represented, all right? So A, B was translated and it became A prime, B prime. Now, what's the question? Uh, okay, it was mapped on, okay. Oh, so basically we wanna know what the translation is. Um, in an effort to find the, the translation, what we could do is just to take a look at um, what took place here. All right, so let me just quickly give you an idea. If you have an object plus your translation, it gives you an image, right? Which means that the translation is equal to my image, take away the object. What, so I could focus on any two corresponding points. Um, so let us say I'm focusing on the Bs. So this is the image and this is the object. The question would have told you, but the, you're seeing the prime here for image as well. So you could set it up seven over eight, and you're gonna subtract five over seven. And um, you're gonna subtract five, seven right there. Hold on, let me write this. Could I, let me give me a minute, let me write this a little better. You wanna subtract five or seven. So hold on. This, this is actually B prime, which is image, and this is actually B, and that is what I'm saying here. So seven minus five is gonna be two, and eight minus seven is one. So the translation that linked them would have been a two, one. So we're looking for two, one. Two, one, not one, two, two, one. Now, let me use another set of point, right? Um, we could have used the A, right, where we could set up A prime here, which is a four, six. And then we're gonna subtract A, which is actually two, five. You'll get the same answer. Four minus two is actually two at the top. Six minus five is one at the bottom. We're still getting the same answer. And with that said, whenever you're dealing with the translation, you don't need to take in multiple pairs. You only need to have one pair as in one set of corresponding points and it works. Let's go to 59, we're almost there. All right, it says, item 59 refers to the diagram below, which shows a lot of five meters long. I'm gonna put my five on this. Five meters long, leaning against a wall. The foot of the ladder is, is on horizontal ground and <clears throat> three meters away from the wall. Okay, so we get context on everything. So here's what the question really wants. It says, how far up the wall is the ladder? In other words, I want to find this distance here all the way down to the ground. Again, I have three sides. The answer is four. I have three sides, right? Where I have, this is a 90 degree right here, which means this is the hypotenuse side. 
And if I have two sides to find the third, um, then it's Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to do anything else. Matter of fact, you can't do anything else. So it is suggested that the five square is equal to three square minus, I'm just going to call that side X, three square plus X square. So this is going to give me 25, which is equal to nine plus X square. Let's subtract the nine from both sides. So 16 is equal to X square. Taking the square root of my 16, my answer X is actually four. And um, if you know your three, four, five triangle, special triangle, then you would have known long ago that the answer is four since the hypotenuse was five and one of the short side was three. It is a given that the third side has to be a four. Have you known that you wouldn't have to work it out? Item 60 and last, it says um, the diagram, it's a, of a building. We see a survey that says, um, this instrument 12 meters from the foot of the building. You could see that. And record the height of the elevation, my bad, and record the angle of elevation of the top of the building. Okay, so we're seeing that. Let's see what the question is about, right? Let me minimize this a little bit. All right. All right, so let's see if we can work this question out right now. Um, what the question one? It says an estimate of the height of the building is obtained by what? Okay, so basically I'm going to take the height of the person into consideration at the end. So when I work out my height based on the height of the person, I'm going to have to add this distance to my value, okay? Now, so basically I'm going to focus on this triangle. I'm going to highlight it for us. I'm focusing on this triangle. Wow. Hold on. I'm decorating this thing too much. Let me go back. I'm focusing on this triangle right here. All right. And then I'm going to try to find that opposite side here, which starts right here at his head height. So um, that's opposite. And then this 12 can move up to here. So this is 12 as well. Right. So that's the same distance here. Those are parallel lines. And this is 12. So basically it's gonna be tangent because I'm dealing with the opposite and the adjacent. So this is the adjacent to 40 and this is the opposite side to 40. So I could start off by saying the tangent of 40 degrees is equal to, and let me call this X, right? I'm just gonna say X over 12, right? Having said that, in order to find X, I'll multiply both sides by 12, boom. So, 12 tan of 40 degrees is equal to X. What is that? Let me label it. So 12 times the tan of 40 degrees is going to be this distance right here. 12 tan 40 will give us this distance from here to here. And then we're going to have to add his height to it to get the full height of the building. So it's going to be 12, so it's going to be 1.6 plus 12 tan 40. Here it is. Here's the answer. Done. All right. Thank you for watching. So I want you to, again, like the video, um, share it so your friends could watch, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel. See you next time.